Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. My name is Keisha Carter. I am the organizer of EIN, and I'm very, very thrilled to have a great speaker for today, Kimberly Crow. So Kimberly Crow will discuss how I grew my power tribe of 50,000 plus speaking on stages. But before she comes to our virtual stage to talk about how she grew her power tribe by speaking on stages, we want to talk about what EIN is and how you can get the most out of everything that EIN offers. So first and foremost, uh, for the first timers here, EIN is an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education, networking sessions during our Q&As and gratitude circle, where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. We also have an app called Entrepreneurs International Network. And to download them on your mobile phones, just head on to Google Play or App Store and find entrepreneurs, intl.network to get access to all other pieces of education. So I'm just going to put in the chat box below the links to that. All right. So you can, um, can take note of it. And you can just click on the links later. And also, if you go to our official website, that is eintalks.com, also in the chat box below, you will be able to see the recording of all the past events that we've had. Plus, you'll be able to take a peek on our upcoming events and register there. So I highly recommend that you download our app and visit our website so you can get access to all the information that I just shared. So today's event will run for an hour and a half, and we'll have our speaker give her talk for 45 minutes. And after that, we'll have a 15-minute question and answer portion by the audience. And lastly, we'll give another 15 minutes for our audience to share their takeaways, their gratitude to our speaker. And after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by 10.30 a.m. Pacific. And with that, let's go to our amazing speaker today, Kimberly Crow. Kimberly Crow is an award-winning, international inspirational public speaker, keynote speaker, TEDx speaker, and authority on speak to self. Kimberly is known for her expertise on audience engagement and is the broadcast personality of Speakers Playhouse. And so I'm more than happy to have Kimberly on our stage to share with us her inspiring talk and how we can benefit from it in our business. So Kimberly, the stage is all yours. Well, hello everyone. I love that she said sit back and get cozy because that's not usually how uh, my, my talks go. We usually sit forward and goof around a lot. It's usually highly interactive, very, very immersive and super fun because my methodology is if it's not fun, it's not worth doing. How many of you are already asleep? Anybody asleep? We're going to wake up. All right, we're gonna wake up right now. If you are a speaker, I would love for you to come on screen. If you're unable to come on screen, that's totally fine. But like Janet and Lynn and Sherry and Kate and Leon and Mobeen and Patrick and Veronica and Ramsey and Sherry and uh, and Kezia, we are lovely, loving seeing your faces. All right, so we would love for you guys to turn on your camera and interact with us if you so desire. Now, some of you that I haven't met yet, I am delighted to meet you for the first time today. Very excited to be here at the Entrepreneurs International Web Network and uh, giving a talk today on how I grew a power tribe of 50,000 by speaking on other people's stages. I just wanna set the tone and say, I love EIN. Um, my mentor, uh, Iman Agai, actually brought me into EIN many years ago. Um, in fact, I was sitting in Vancouver uh, at one of his events, and he said, he told the story of how he created it. Uh, he was going to be meeting with somebody, and it was kind of a big wig, and he was currently unemployed. Uh, he was, uh, like, I think he says 30 days from being coming homeless, um, and he really didn't have, like, a, any, any platform to stand on. And when he went into this meeting, he's like, I need to be able to, to create credibility. So I'm going to go into Meetup. Everybody know Meetup? Everybody remember Meetup? 
meetup is a long time ago, but it's still out there doing good stuff for us. So he created a meetup called Entrepreneurs International Network. And when he did, he then marched into his meeting and he said, hello. And the guy said, hi, I'm this person that's really important, blah, blah, blah. And Iman said, yes, I'm Iman guy. I'm the creator of the Entrepreneur, Entrepreneur International Network. And all of a sudden he had instant credibility. How awesome is that? You guys love that? Give me jazz hands if you're like, that was pretty freaking smart. It was pretty freaking smart. So I'm sitting in the audience and I'm like, that dude's smart. This guy's a genius. Like, I'm going to do that. So I go in to meet up. And this is many years ago. It's uh, 2018, 2017, something like that. Meetup is a little bit different now. After COVID, it had to do a total revamp. If you think your business like got into crisis during COVID, imagine what meetup did. Basically, there were no meetups for a really long time, right? So I was like, oh, meetup, that's a super cool idea. So I go into meetup and they had the ability to create a free meetup. And so I go in and I create this free meetup and I'm like, oh, we're going to create the San Diego Solopreneurs and International Solopreneurs and Entrepreneurs Network. That's what I created because I was like, that's a pretty cool idea. So I went ahead and created that. That was at noon on the last day of the event with Iman. I'm, I'm actually, while he's talking, I opened up my computer and started it and I was like, shut my computer. And I was like, now I'm pretty cool. Look who I am. I'm the founder of the uh, San Diego Entrepreneur and in Solopreneur Network. I'm awesome, right? So then I go and finish the event with Iman and I get on the plane that night at six o'clock at night. And as I'm crossing, I just remember so vividly, as I'm crossing the threshold to get onto the plane, a little message comes up on my phone from Meetup. And I was like, oh my gosh, I had somebody join my Meetup. I'm super excited. No. When I opened that up, it said 50 people had already joined that meetup group and they wanted me to upgrade to be able to let the others in who were waiting to join my group because the maximum for a free account was 50. Oh, wow. What? That is the power of creating something like this platform that we have today. So thank you to Kezia. Thank you to Amon for inspiring this and making this happen as possible. It is a fantastic way to be able to grow your power tribe by creating speaking opportunities, by creating networking opportunities, by getting on other people's stages. If you are interested in getting on other people's stages to grow your network, put OPS in the chat box, OPS, other people's stages. If you're interested in getting on other people's stages to grow your network, put OPS in the chat box. OPS, other people's stages is so fabulous. Why? Because I came here and Kezia introduced me to her Entrepreneur International Network crowd. I get a chance for third-party credibility. She's like, Kimberly's amazing. Come listen to her, right? That's what happens when you get invited onto other people's stages. At the end of your talk, I learned this from Iman. At the end of the talk, you need to know, you before you get on the stage, you need to know three things. One, be clear on what you're going to present your audience. So before we started this talk, I actually went to Kezia and I was like, what's my talk title? <laughs> because I give a lot of different talks. And this one about power tribe is different from the one that I traditionally give. So I wanted to verify what I was going to be talking about before I started talking, before I started talking. So the first thing you want to do before you get on any stage is be clear about what you're talking about. Also, you want to be clear about what timing you have. So verified with her, I got 45 minutes to talk. Is that about right? Yes. Okay, great. And then we're going to do Q&A. Fantastic. So you want to be sure that you have that in your mind when you get on the stage. That keeps you focused and it keeps the audience focused too. Because if you know what you're going to be talking about, then they'll know what you're talking about. All right. It's when you get on a stage and you don't know what you're talking about and you're sort of making it up as you go along, which many of us do, that's fine. But you got to at least know where the end zone is, right? Like, where are we going to? What's going to happen at the end of this talk? So the other two things you need to know are what at the end of this talk, what, how do I want my audience to feel? How do I want them to feel? Do I want them to feel hopeful? Do I want them to feel uh, disconcerted? Do I want them to feel angry? Do I want them to like feel like they, they want to make a change in their life? What do I want them to feel at the end of this talk? And then the other thing that I learned from Iman is the third thing that you want them to know is what do I want them to do at the end of this talk? So while Kezia and I were in the green room before we got started, I was like, this is what we're going to do at the end. She's like, awesome. Let's make that happen. So before you get on any stage, you want to know those three things. One, what am I clearly going to teach? Number two, at the end of this talk, how do I want my audience to feel? And number three, at the end of this talk, what do I want my audience to do? If you have those three things in mind before you get on somebody else's stage, 
you are going to be able to successfully transform the audience into your tribe, the ones that should belong on your tribe, to be able to grow your know, like, and trust, to be able to build a list, to be able to grow raving fans, people who know you and they're like, I kind of like this chick. And then they opt into your list. They take you up on your offer and they make things happen. I am not a big fan of Facebook ads. Does anybody out here do Facebook ads? Anybody do Facebook ads? No, I'm not a big, yes, Lynn does. Okay, awesome. They work and they are in great business to charge you because they work, right? It's a, it's a good way to build your list. I feel like I cannot come across with my personality, nor can you guys come across with your personality in a Facebook app, right? Especially if you are selling coaching or healing. Now, if you're selling something where you will never interact with them, absolutely. If I'm selling this mug right here, and I show you a picture of this mug and you're like, I want that mug, great. But if I'm selling you my coaching services, my uh, my events, my activities, my program of any kind, my six week course, then you're gonna wanna know who I am. And it's very difficult to get that from a Facebook ad. But what you can get it from is getting on stage. So how many of you have already made a judgment about me? All of you have already made a judgment about me, right? You already have made a judgment. Some of you are like, geez, this chick talks fast. I could never learn from her. Totally awesome. I'm good with that, right? I, uh, that, and you guys all have a, a format too, right? Some of you are like very methodical. Some of you are, if you've ever done a disc pro profile, you guys done the disc profile on, you know, like driver and inspiration and then S and M. I don't even know what the S stands for or the M stand for because I have none of it, right? Like I am not methodical at all. I'm very dynamic. I'm very inspirational, but I am not systematic or methodical at all. Some of you are. And when you get on stage, you're going to show that personality and people are going to be like, I get her. I get him. And I want to learn from that kind of person. Some of you are like, wow, I need energy in my life. I don't know what kind of coffee Kimberly drinks. Decaf. But I want what she's drinking, right? And some of you are like, I love this. I love this energy. I want that, okay? But then we can't just be that. We can't be, I have a methodology or I'm really energized. We actually have to provide value, all right? So when you get on stage, you've got to know what value you're going to provide at the end. So I'm going to teach you guys what I know about getting on other people's stages and how to make it super profitable for yourself. Profiting from getting on stages is really what entrepreneurs and coaches and speakers and healers are all about. And there's a lot of different ways to profit. In this particular talk, we're going to talk about how you can make sure that you get people engaged and on your list, right? There's other ways to profit, speak to sell. There's other ways to profit, grow your authority, build your know, like, and trust. Make sure that people know about you, right? There's all kinds of different ways to profit from stages, but each time you get on the stage, you need to know those three things. What am I going to teach? What am I clearly going to teach? How do I want my audience to feel at the end? And what do I want them to do? Now, the do is also known as a call to action, abbreviated by, put it in the chat box. Anybody know what call to action is abbreviated by? You can put it in the chat box. It's audience participation time. That's right, call to action. You guys are amazeballs. Yes, it's a call to action, also known as a CTA, call to action. Um, at the end of every talk, you need to have a proper call to action. What's a proper call to action? The natural next step. Write that down, the natural next step. Now, the call to action for this movie, that's We have a lot of music in there. Awesome, I dig music. The call to action and a natural next step might be buy my stuff. I have a program. I would love for you to come join it, right? It might be a very large program. It could be, um, I'll just give you one example. I was at a three-day event. Brendan Bruchard was hosting the three-day event. He had about 3,000 people in the room, maybe 2,000 people. He had about uh, 2,000 to 3,000 people in the room. He made a pitch. On the second day, just like Iman does, at a pitch on the second day for a $10,000 program, he made about three to $4 million in a 20 minute talk. That's pretty awesome, right? Do you guys like to make three to $4 million in a 20 minute talk? He made a call to action that was the natural next step in that audience, all right? They had 
been nurtured. He, they had uh, gotten an opportunity to see him. Some of them saw him for the first time, but he came out of the shoot giving his all. He showed up as him. He spoke. He shared his personality. He knew what he wanted the audience to do at the end of that talk, and he knew how he wanted his audience to feel. Okay, very powerful opportunity to be able to do that out of a 20 minute talk, three day event. But in the talk, it was about 20 minutes to pitch and made three to four million dollars. Right. Just a ton of people signed up for his $10,000 mastermind. Amaze balls. Right. So that was the natural next step for that audience. If you're on a podcast, can you sell a $10,000 program? I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, no, you cannot. You might be able to, you might be able to, but it needs to be the natural next step for somebody. Somebody listening to a podcast may not be like, I cannot wait to buy their $10,000 program. And it is perfect for me, right? Maybe. But generally speaking, from a podcast, you're going to want to offer something completely different. You're going to offer them something that's a natural next step from a podcast. Who's been on, on a podcast in the last six weeks? Okay, Patrick. Patrick, what did you give at the end of your talk? Uh, let's see which one. <laughs> so probably gave a, uh, let's see. I, there were a couple that I did a, if they were longer, I did a, a consultation and offered a consultation or, awesome. or, or I just offered like an ebook. Ebook. Okay, great. Awesome. Fantastic. Sherry, I saw that you uh, raised your hand as well. What did you give at the end of your talk? Oh, you're on mute. Got to unmute, babe. Which, Sherry, you've got two. <laughs> oh, Sherry, you Sherry. I know you Sherry. I was calling on you because I try not to call on people that don't volunteer unless I know them. And I know. Patrick okay. Knows. Well, I haven't been on a podcast in the last six weeks, but when I was on a podcast, I, uh, I typically give a lead magnet, um, usually just a little PDF. I've heard people won't read eBooks, so I don't tend to give those. Uh, and like Patrick said, if it's longer, I offer a consultation. Awesome. Okay, fantastic. So absolutely. Um, I, I love those giveaways. It is a natural next step for somebody who's heard you on a podcast to want to engage with you a little bit further. Uh, in my opinion, uh, some of the things that make really good uh, giveaways are PDFs, workshops, assessments, uh, quizzes, Things that include very little time or, inv or money investment from either the attendee or from you. So when you give away as freebie on a podcast, Patrick, I'm going to pick on you a little bit only because I love you and I know that you can take this. So if you give away your time on a podcast to anyone who wants it, you have just told them that you have a lot of time on your hands to give away. And you value your time at zero. So be careful when you announce to a podcast audience that you're giving away your time. Um, when you give away a PDF, you need to give it away at something that is easy for people to remember on a podcast. Easy for people to remember. Okay. When you give away something on a podcast and you say, oh, we're going to put the link in the show notes then it's a problem because only about 5% of people ever go to the show notes to grab the links. So you need to give something that's easy to remember on a podcast. Imagine where you listen to your podcast, right? Some of you listen in front of your computer. Many of you listen at the gym or on your bike ride or when you're doing groceries or gardening or whatever that's when, or in your car and you don't have time to go back and go to the show notes, right? So you want to give something that is easy to remember gift from Kezia. Or if you go to right now, if you guys go to amazeballs.com, you can see my free gift. I think it's amazeballsgift.com. It might be amazeballs.com. Um, there are things that it would be easy for people to remember. All right. Also a text opt-in from a, a podcast is a really good thing to offer, right? Text the word surprise to XYZ, XYZ, right? Mm -hmm. That is a really cool thing for people to take action on because oftentimes they're listening to the podcast, what, on their phone. So they can do a text opt-in really, really easily, okay? So some really cool option there would be to offer your gift on something for easy for them to remember. You wanna offer um, something that would be uh, easy for them to consume. Now, Patrick has an ebook 
Congratulations, Patrick. Pat yourself on the back. Creating an ebook is a difficult thing to do. It takes a lot of concentration, focus, and um, and make sure and and to be able to get all that down on paper. Fantastic. However, Sherry does allude to the idea that people will not grab an ebook. Why? Because are there any teachers in the room? Anybody ever taught school like K through eight? Okay. Yeah, you're gonna hate this next part. People don't like to read anymore. It's too big of an investment. It's too big of an investment to get an ebook. So people oftentimes will not opt into the ebook. However, you ebook people are awesome. I'm gonna show you exactly how you're gonna leverage that. You're gonna create a PDF checklist. You're gonna to go to your chapter list and you're gonna find the first 10 chapters and you're gonna turn that into a checklist with the same title as your book. Then you're gonna say, come get my 10 point checklist for this. And then when you deliver it to them at the bottom of that, you can say, want more? Grab my entire ebook here. Okay, that way the people who do want your ebook are going to get it, but the people who aren't ready to commit to a whole ebook are still going to opt into your list. Now, we talked a lot about the gifts that you should give. I don't actually even want you to overthink them. What I want you to overthink is the title of the of whatever you're going to give. It's got to have three things in it. Write this down. Number 1, give me a noun. Tell me what it is. Is it a checklist, a worksheet, uh, a PDF? Is it a blueprint? Is it, what is it, right? So if you say the, you know, the dreampreneur ocean dwelling, something like that, we're going to be like, I don't know what that is. Like, give me a noun. Tell me what it is. The second thing you need to include is the name of your target market. The name of your target market. All right. So if you have a guide, it's going to be the uh, four types of stages that every entrepreneur should get on. Right. Or the 10 ways to monetize your message as a speaker. Okay. So put the name of your target market actually in there. That way, when people are opting into it, they're like, that's for me. I need that. I'm a speaker. I'm an entrepreneur, I need that, okay? And the third thing that you need to put in there is a number, a number. So the four stages every entrepreneur should get on, the 10 ways to monetize your message, how I grew my list to 50,000. We wanna know how much or how long, okay? Our brains wanna know that as human beings. It's very, very attractive to us. We can put it in a nice little box and be like, yes, I want that, okay? Um, one thing that, um, okay. So we just, we, I see in the chat, people are like, wait, 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 I always, I want to give away my time. Um, I'm not saying don't, I'm just saying don't. <laughs> All right. I'm not saying don't, I'm just saying don't. It's an opportunity to be able to connect with people, but it's when you give it to everybody, people consider it. When you give away something, it is by definition, it has no value because it's free. It by definition has no value. Now, of course it has value because your 10 tips are gonna be fabulous and all that. But once you say your time has no value, value, you're in a lot of trouble, ladies and gentlemen. So here's what you need to do. Um, I know that many of you are like, but they have to fill out this form and qualify to talk to me and they have to be like, like this. That actually might screen out the wrong kinds of people. I, it's very hard to get on my calendar. We're kind of doing a little bit of a side link here, but we're going to get back to the topic in just a second. This is important for you guys to know. What you actually want to screen for is the difference between freebie grabbers, which are awesome. I love them. They built my list to 50,000. They're great. And clients, buyers, okay? My freebie grabbers can have all my PDFs they want. My buyers can have people talk. My PDFs, people, my freebie grabbers, they can have all the PDFs, all the recordings, all the, the stuff that costs me no time and no money. They can have it all. People who buy stuff from me can have my time. Okay. So how do you separate those, Kimberly? Am I only going to speak to people after they buy from me? Funny enough, you're actually, uh, in my coaching, I teach 
that you should give your time away to people who have found their credit card and know how to use it. Okay. If they have found their credit card and they know how to use it, then they are a qualified audience. So let's talk about what some of those might be. If you are speaking on somebody else's stage and they had to pay to get here, they're a qualified audience. They didn't pay you, but they paid somebody else. Okay. They found their credit card. They know how to use it. And they're not afraid to invest in themselves. Those people could potentially get on my calendar or your calendar. If they have bought something from you, if they bought your easy yes offer, some people call that a tripwire. I hate that phrase. The last way I want to start my relationship with somebody that buys from me is by telling them they just tripped over something. Ah, ah I got you. Right? No. For me, it's called an easy yes offer. If they bought an easy yes offer, something between $1, ideally $7 and $27, that's an easy yes offer, okay? So if they bought something from you, now they've paid you money. Great, let's talk to them, okay? Those are the people you can give your time to. Let's do a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. Let's do, it, um, let's, let's do a deep dive and figure out what, what we can play with, right? And people who have bought things from other people's programs, paid to see you speak. Here's another one. If you are at a live in-person event and people have had to travel to get there, they're a very qualified audience. They've had to figure out how to get on an airplane. They are action takers. They have paid for a hotel room, most likely. They've maybe paid for the event itself. Those are qualified buyers. Those people you can give your time to. How do I get access to those people, Kimberly? Well, have you been on a summit? Anybody ever been on a summit? Spoken on a summit? Two of you have. All right. Well, go speak on them. They're great. I do summits all the time. I host a lot, a lot of summits. And they're very powerful ways to get in front of a buying audience. Here's how you get in front of the buying audience. Give a VIP gift. Take your $500 course that you taught last month. Put it in a recording put a pretty bow on it and give that entire course away for free to the VIPs. VIPs are people who paid the summit host $49, $97, $197. And then they come into the summit and they watch you speak. Now they know who you are. And they're like, I upgraded to VIP. I want her VIP gift. They go and get your VIP gift. They opt into your VIP gift. These are your first follow-ups, right? You may have had a hundred people opt into your summit. If you're on a good summit, um, you may have had a hundred people opt into your freebie. You may have five or 10 people that opt into your VIP. Those are your first phone calls. Those are the people that you get on your, your calendar, right? Those are the people you want to follow up with. They found their credit card. They know how to use it and they want your stuff. They want your course. They're ideal customers for you. Perfection. Okay. So when you build your list to 50,000, you're going to want to add freebie people because you're gonna to want to nurture them toward a sale. Anytime you drop a link that asks for their name and email address, ideally you are bringing them into your fold to nurture them forward into a sale. You're gonna build your list by speaking on other people's stages and then you're going to nurture them by, by once they get on your list, don't forget about them, do a deep content funnel and make sure that every two or three days they get an email from you. One of my dear friends, Ginny Trask, had a summit. On her summit, she got 1,100 people to opt into her list in that summit, a one-day summit, 1,100. Awesome, huge list build for her. She had no list before that. Two months later, she said, that was great. Can I do another one? I was like, yes, let's do another one together. So we started doing the second one. We emailed her list to say, does anybody want to speak? And she got a whole bunch of unsubscribes. She's like, yeah, a whole bunch of people just unsubscribed to that. I was like, what, what happened? Let's dig into that. Like, what, did, what have you been sending them? She's like, oh, I didn't send them anything else. They had forgotten who she was. They'd forgotten who she was. So you can't build your list to 50,000 if you're going to build a list and then forget about it and then try to build it again right? Because everybody's going to unsubscribe. They're all going to fall off your list. The only way to do that is to nurture them once they get there. So build a deep content funnel so that you can do that. Everybody with me so far? Can I get some head nods, thumbs up, jazz hands? It's audience participation time, ladies and gentlemen. I give to you, you give to me.
One of my core principles for teaching, whenever you teach, anytime you teach, you want feedback. Oh, Kimberly, that's criticism, I'm afraid. Nope, feedback is from the audience, nods, smiles. Disengagement is also feedback. People that turn off their camera in the middle of it, people who disappear in the middle of it, it's feedback. And people might be like, oh, wait, what if they had to go do something? Yes, some people have to go do something. They might put in the chat, I am hate that I'm going to miss this, but I got to go to Johnny's soccer game. Great, that's feedback too, right? But if they just, like, you start with 18 people and you end up with four, that's feedback, right? <laughs> Every single time you speak, you're getting feedback. That's how you get better. Okay. I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm glad you guys are here with me. What a cool audience. I love Iman's people. They're totally great. Okay. Um, so now you know what you're going to drop. You're going to drop an, something that has a an opt-in for it. You're going to give your name. You're going to get their name and their email address. And then on the other side of that, you're going to have them opt into your list. You're going to deliver the material to them. Um, and then you're going to nurture them forward eventually toward a sale, but you can continue to give them uh, uh, other stuff as well. I go on hiatus every summer. I take two months off. My team runs my entire program for me. It's fantastic. Uh, if you guys have not had a vacation in the last three years because you're entrepreneurs and you never take time off, you have a shitty boss. I highly recommend that you change that today. Give yourself a vacation, all right? The holidays are coming up. Whatever holiday you celebrate, give yourself a week off. All right. I go away on vacation. During that time, I do not forget my list. During that time, we have pre-recorded what we call crow clips. Crow, crow clips are like a three to five minute inspirational. Here's how you do business. Here's how you do speaking. Here's how you create a lead magnet. Here's how you do this, right? Three to five minute talks. Me just talking at the camera. I don't love doing those primarily because I like interaction from the audience. I like to see their faces and be like, oh, they're getting it. They're with me. Oh, I have to slow down, right? Um, but I will record a three to five minute video so that they can drop those periodically while I'm on vacation. So my list doesn't think I forgot about them. I'm having a great time in Guatemala or Peru or Spain, but they're getting content from me. Again, you cannot grow your list to 50,000 unless you nurture it to have them stay there. It doesn't help at all to drop links and say, oh, grab my list and then forget about them. You've got to have a nurture sequence to move them forward. Awesome. All right. So we know what we're going to drop. We're going to drop the natural next step for them to take. We know um, what that should be titled. It should be something with a noun, a number, and your target market in it. We know that we're gonna ask for their name and email address, not their phone number, not their credit card, unless you're selling them something. And we know that we're going to nurture them once we get them on the list. So now let's talk about the four different types of stages that you can get on in order to grow your list. Stage number one is a speak to sell stage. This is a speak to sell stage. A podcast can be a speak to sell stage. A LinkedIn Live can be a speak to sell stage. A Clubhouse stage could be a speak to sell stage. A summit could be a speak to sell stage. You may not be selling an offer at the end. And if you do, you probably owe an affiliate commission for it or you're paying to speak, that's fine. But on a speak to sell stage, you are going to drop something at the end for them to join your list. It needs to be that natural next step. Okay. Make sure that you're clear on your call to action. A confused mind never makes a decision. I don't know if I'm doing this or doing this, right? I don't know if I want vanilla or chocolate or strawberry or pecan, or I don't know what I want, right? Like I'm going to stare there and think for a little while. You want them to have one clear call to action that they can take at the end of your talk. Okay. Um, a speak to sell stage is a very profitable stage if you know what you're going to do at the end of it. The way to make that stage profitable is to make sure that you have a clear call to action, that it's easy for them to opt into, and it's a natural next step. Okay? If you're on a summit, oh, funny story. I'll just tell you a funny story real quick. Uh, COVID happened. We all went to Zoom. It was awesome. We were dropping links in the chat, right, left and sideways. Then I had an in-person event. At the in-person event, I had uh, one of my speakers come to me, and they gave me a piece of paper. And I was like, what's this? And they're like, that's the link for people to buy. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this link? <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do with it? There's no chat that we can drop it in, right? 
what do you want me to do with this link? And I said, instead, what you're going to want them to do is put, have them tear a piece of paper out of their notebook, write down their name and email address and phone number and hand it to you. That's an opt-in on a, on a real live in-person stage. If you forget when you're on a real live in-person stage, that's a great way to do things. Write down your name, your email address, and your phone number, and I'll be in the back of the room. Just hand it to me. We'll schedule a call, right? That kind of thing. Or I'll send you my gift or I'll give you a copy of my book or whatever it is, right? Um, that's a great opt-in for a, a real live in-person stage. Well, also meet me at the back of the room. That's a great one. Like I'll be here all week. I have a table in the back. I would love to meet you guys at the next part. Fantastic, right? Great call to action. Very appropriate for that stage. Stage number one is a speak to sell stage. You want to have the, to profit from it. You want to have the natural next step and an easy opt-in, an easy yes offer. Stage number two, this is the brass ring of speaking. This is the one everybody wants to profit from. It is the paid speaking gig, paid speaking gig, right? How many of you would like to get paid for speaking? Put a dollar sign in the chat box. Put a dollar sign in the chat box if you want to get paid for speaking. How would you like to make a living speaking? Put $2 signs in the chat box. Put $2 signs in the chat box if you would like to make a living speaking. And put $3 signs in the chat box if you would like to make a living and make a difference speaking. Paid speaking gigs are fantastic ways to get paid for sharing your knowledge, right? But many of you don't realize this. You've already had paid speaking gigs. You already are a paid speaker. If you have taught a class and charged for that class, you are a paid speaker. If you, like Janet, have taught elementary school or whatever, you are a paid speaker. I was an actress. I was paid as an actress. You are a paid speaker. I was an audiobook narrator. I had my own audiobook narration business, which is super fun and does not pay very well. But an audiobook narration business is super fun and it is a paid speaking gig. I have been a, an equestrian polo announcer. That was a paid speaking gig. I did it for free many times. And then they were like, you're awesome. Can we bring you to our big one? And I was like, yes. And then they paid me for it. It was super fun. Paid speaking gigs are great. The way to maximize that one is as follows. The way to profit from a paid speaking gig is as follows. Make sure to get paid before you speak. Traditionally, in a paid speaking gig, when you're a keynoter or you have a $5,000 keynote talk, um, and I teach how to create a $5,000 plus travel billable bookable keynote talk. That is a powerful opportunity to get a paid speaking gig. In your contract, it needs to say that you get half your pay up front to save the day for them. And it is non-refundable. If you know show, it's fully refundable. But if they cancel or they move the date and you can't be there, whatever it is, it's non-refundable to them. The second half gets paid before you grab the mic. Now, you don't have to do it that way. But that is traditional in business. And not only that, if you don't get paid before you speak, there's no way to repossess your talk, right? You can't go be like, oh, I'm going to repossess that talk. Nope, you already gave it too late. Now you have created a brand new business for yourself. Congratulations. You now have a new business. It's called Collections and it sucks, okay? Nobody wants that business. So... Stage number two is the paid speaking gig. The way to profit from that one is to make sure you get paid before you speak. Now, usually you can't make a pitch from that, but you can allude to a program you have, all right? I've gotten this result from my clients. I've gotten that result from my clients. I have a book. You can usually talk about your book. I'll be signing books in the back of the room if anybody would like a copy of it. Usually you can promote your book because it gives you authority for being on that person's stage, but you do need to check with your, uh, your uh, event host if you're allowed to do that or not. But in more, more cases than not, you're allowed to promote a book because it's good for them. It's good for you. It's good for everyone. All right. So stage number two, everybody clear on that? Stage number three is an authority stage. Put it in the chat box. What is an authority stage that you know about? What stage could you get on that instantly gives you authority? It's like the pinnacle. People would always want to get on this stage. EIN. Awesome. Any other stages? It is. This is an authority stage. TED. Yep. TED and TEDx. Um, there are other authority stages, but we're going to go with this one for now because it's the easiest. Most people have their heads wrapped around what a TEDx talk is. TEDx talk, you cannot sell from. If you sell, it is owned by TED and they will put it in a black box and it will never be seen. 
You can say I gave a TEDx talk, but the world will never see that TEDx talk because it is copyrighted TEDx material and it is not, it is up to them to release it. And if you pitch or allude, allude too strongly to your program, you cannot, you, it will not be released. It's over. It's a violation of their rules. You also cannot get paid to do a TEDx. So Kimberly, how am I going to profit from this? If I can't get paid to do a TEDx, can't do an opt-in, I can't do, I can't get, I can't sell anything from a TEDx. Why would I want to do a TEDx? Because it gives you authority. Right now, you guys are all on computers. Go to your, uh, go to one of your browser tabs and type in Kimberly Crow TEDx. Crow with an E, TEDx. Um, when you do, when you scroll through, you can't just do Kimberly Crow because some realtor is named Kimberly Crow and she got here before I did. I'm super pissed. She takes over the world. She's got lots of SEO. But if you type in Kimberly Crow TEDx, you're going to get me for about eight pages before you get anybody else. That is a powerful tool. My TEDx is right there at the top. And then all kinds of podcasts that I've been on are below it. Podcasts are great for social media and optimization and SEO. They're fantastic for that, right? So all kinds of stuff about me, if you Google that right now. A TEDx stage gives you authority, but Kimberly, I can't sell from it. I can't get paid for it. So how do I maximize the profit from that one? Get it out everywhere. Don't hide it. Get it to as many views as you possibly can. Make it go viral. I have 70,000 views on my TEDx talk. That's awesome. Most TEDx talks, the average has about 215. All right? There's a lot of TEDx's out there. But if you get over 70,000, 100,000, a million views, you're going to get seen and heard. That way people know you before they know you. Okay? You want to make sure to get it out everywhere. That's how to maximize that stage and profit from it get views and likes and comments and shares. When you get comments on it, under your TEDx talk, you can post usually your own comment. Hey, Sally, I'm glad you liked that. If you liked this, come check out my website here. Boom. Hey, Sally, if you like that, you might like this. Here's my checklist for 10 ways to monetize your message. Boom. All right. Now you've monetized from an authority stage. That's how you profit from that. Stage number four, Kezia, can I get a time check? Kezia, can I get a time check? I think I've got about 18 minutes left. Okay, I'm good. Um, okay, so um, stage number three is an authority stage. The way to maximize that one is get it out everywhere, make it go viral, tell everybody about it. If you have a TEDx, it better be on your website. It better be on your LinkedIn profile. It better be on, uh, for the first little bit, it should be on your emails that go out. I was on another authority stage called the Women Who Mean Business stage in San Diego many years ago when I was in corporate. And we did a mail out to all of our customers in the San Diego area, letting them know that I had been on that. It was a very big authority and credibility builder for us. If we hadn't told anybody about it, it would have been useless. But by mailing our entire San Diego uh, uh, marketing list, we were able to get in front of customers and they're like, hey, I didn't know you were on that stage. That's awesome. Congratulations. You have to be nominated to get on that stage. And I needed, and I got, I don't know if I needed them all, 19 letters of recommendation to be on that stage. A powerful stage to get on because it gives you authority just by the virtue of being on it. To maximize that, make sure people know about it. Like, share, trust, comment. Okay. Stage number four may surprise you. Stage number four is a rehearsal stage, a rehearsal stage. Write that down. Stage number four is a rehearsal stage. It's a practice stage. It's an opportunity to practice your talk. My favorite practice stages are podcasts. I love being on podcasts. It's a great way to try out a new talk, right? This talk for the first time was given on a podcast. Gave it on a podcast and it like sank in and I was like, oh, I could redo that part. Um, here's a tip. If you're ever on a podcast, go back to the podcast after it's posted, put a, a note on your calendar to check it six weeks later, go back and comment, look through the comments and comment on the comments. All those comments are feedback. The only way to get good at speaking is by immersion, right? You got to publicly speak. You've got to do it over and over again. Try out new talks on podcasts. I love doing that. Usually they're interview style and you have a conversation with somebody. So their questions inherently are feedback. They're going to be like, hey, I don't quite understand this point. And did you mean that? And oh, wow, I really liked that point. That's all feedback for you. 
Okay. And podcasts are great rehearsal stages. Toastmasters, some of you are like, oh, Toastmasters. Toastmasters can be a good rehearsal stage. You might get seven minutes once a month to practice. It's not a great rehearsal stage for our level of folks. It is fantastic for engineers who want to not throw up on their shoes when giving a presentation in front of their boss. It's a great place to go for them. Okay. Not necessarily for us because we usually give longer talks than that. And we don't want to just do it once a month. We want to do it longer than that and more frequently than that. So get on podcasts. How can you get on podcasts? Well, you can go to Speaker's Playhouse. There's a ton of podcasts that we drop every single month on that. That's a fabulous place to go. And also, I have an event coming up called Potapalooza. I think Kezia has a link for that. We'll put it in the chat. If you'd like to go to Potapalooza, we have 25 podcasters that you're going to get introduced to right away. Not only that, if you upgrade to VIP, I'm going to make sure that you get an opportunity to get interviewed during Potapalooza. It's a virtual event. You'll get interviewed by Potapalooza as a VIP on up to five podcasts. And we will make sure that you get at least one. Okay. Check out Potapalooza. It's 10 bucks to join as general admission. If you want to join as a VIP, you're going to, it's $250. I have paid more than $250 to get on one stage, let alone five. There'll be fantastic practice stages. Not only that, you'll get introduced to 25 something uh, podcasters and you can connect with them and get on their podcast after the event. Super fun opportunity. If you're ready to not just dip your toe in the water, if you're ready to dip your toe in the water, go. Be general admission. Find out more about getting on podcasts, connect with the podcasters, learn a little bit more about how to monetize your message, learn how to grow your list, learn how to maximize speaking as a strategy to market yourself and learn how to become a podcaster if you want to. There's all kinds of amazing talks that day. And then if you upgrade to VIP, you get a whole bunch of bonuses, the recording of the event. And on top of that, you'll get interviewed by, on up to five podcasts during the event. So some of you are like, I have not been on a podcast. Most of you were, have not been on a podcast in the last six weeks. Now, if you, let me just do an aside here. Some of you may not need to. If you have so much money in your bank account that you have to clear it out every night to make room for more coming in tomorrow, maybe you don't need to get on podcasts. But if you don't, maybe getting on podcasts would be the funnest, quickest, easiest, most awesome way to start building awareness of who you are and what you're up to in the world. People get to know you, they see your personality, they see who you are, how you show up, how you teach, what they can learn from, if you're valuable, which all of you are, and your message gets out there. Listen, if you're not being seen, you're being overlooked. If you're not being heard, your message is not getting out there. And if you're not consistently getting it out on stages, then it's not going to have the impact you would like it to have before you leave the planet. I highly recommend getting out on stages. Stage number four is a rehearsal stage. Podcasts are great rehearsal stages. Here's what's not a great rehearsal stage. Your bathroom mirror, your pets, and your children. I know they all told you to practice in the bathroom mirror. No, hugely unsuccessful for most people. Here's another one, record yourself and play it back to yourself. <laughs> I hate watching myself on recording and I have a lot of fun. And I'm good at this and I've done it over 5,000 times. And I watch myself on recording. I have a sizzle reel that they just did for me. And it's got a couple of bits of me talking. I'm like, oh my God, really? Get another bit. I hate that one. Rec recording yourself and watching yourself is not a good rehearsal stage. Why? Because you're not getting proper feedback. You're only getting feedback from yourself. And you're not very nice as a critic. You're not very nice to yourself. How many, like, I'm not very nice to myself. Raise your hand if you're not very nice to yourself. Yes. It's crappy feedback. Don't do that to yourself. Get feedback from somebody else and make sure it's feedback that has value, right? Like you were amazing, Kimberly. Thank you. Anything you'd like to see next time? Anything I could do better next time? Right, get feedback. If you are doing a podcast, you're getting feedback from the interviewer, go back six weeks later, get, inter get feedback from the comments section. That's all feedback for you. I gave a talk one time. Here's a story about me. Fail, total fail. By the way, I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Its motto is learn by doing, right? Immerse yourself, figure it out along the way. It's also known as learn by failing. 
So I gave a talk one time and I was on fire. You guys know those times when you're on fire and you're amazing, right? The chat's blowing up and everybody loves you and it's fantastic. So I gave this talk one time, this talk about the four types of stages every entrepreneur should get on and how to maximize each one. And as I was giving it, at the end of the talk, I said, and by the way, you'll notice that I don't even have a one sheet. I don't have a one sheet. I've been on over 5,000 stages. I've never had a one sheet. So don't stop and wait till you have a perfect one sheet before you get on stages. You can get on plenty of stages without a one sheet. And I went on and I wrapped up and gave my freebie and blah, blah, blah. Afterwards, I looked at the chat notes. People were like, what's a one sheet? Yeah, I don't know. Did she say what a one sheet was? I don't know what a one sheet is. And I was like, oh, feedback, right? Learning lesson. Next time I will tell people what a one sheet is. By the way, those of you who don't know, a one sheet is a, uh, a two-sided, it's actually two pages, a two-sided PDF that you could hand a speaker booker when we used to do that. We don't really do it anymore. Now we email it to them and it's two pages, but it's still called a one sheet. It has your name, your contact information on it, your talk titles, uh, some testimonials, uh, the learning points and the tips that you have for the audience, the takeaways, okay? Now I filled that in. Now you know what an open loop is and a closed loop is. You gotta tell people what it is. I have a secret fifth stage for you guys. Ready? If you want a secret fifth stage, give me some jazz hands. There's one more stage that you all should do. Secret fifth stage is your own stage. Your own stage. Because you can make it any of the four stages that you want. You can make it a paid speaking gig. Just put it behind a paywall. You want to see Kimberly's amazing talk on XYZ? Just go ahead and pay $27. Here's the link. Right? Or... Um, do you want to do it? You have to join my mastermind. This is the, uh, we're going to give a talk in my mastermind. Go join my mastermind here, right? That's a paid speaking gig. You want to make it a rehearsal stage? Absolutely. Do Facebook live, create a podcast, do a LinkedIn live. If you want to create a, uh, an authority stage, have other people come in, bring in experts, do interviews with them then it's an authority stage. Maybe not for you, maybe for you. You get to be the Oprah, they get to be the guest. They're the expert, it's an authority stage for them. It's also an authority stage for you, okay? You can make it any of the stages that you want. You, you could absolutely make it speak to self. At the end of every talk, just drop a link to whatever, your podcast, your uh, YouTube channel, your website, your ebook, whatever you wanna have them opt into, just, have them, just drop that at the end of every talk, okay? Awesome. Now here's the thing. How do I do that, Kimberly? I could, I'd love to create my own space, stage, but I'm a busy entrepreneur and I don't know if I should start a podcast today. Don't. All you need to do is decide that you're going to create a stage. You all can do it right here, right now. You guys can all create your own stage. This is how you do it. I'm Kimberly Crow. I'm going to create a brand new stage called Wednesdays at one or Tuesdays at two or Thursdays at three or Fridays at five or Saturdays at six. I'm going to go live every single Thursday at three and I'm bringing on experts. I would love for you guys to be my first 10 guests. If you'd like to do that, please put a yes, ma'am in the chat box and I will connect with you. I'm not really doing that, but that's how you can do it. Think create your own stage. Nobody needs to give you permission. You don't need to overcomplicate things. You just decide. That's all you have to do is just decide. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the four stages and the secret fifth stage. That is how I grew my list to 50,000. And that has been a little slice of heaven for me to be able to teach you. I am open for Q&A if you guys have questions. In the meantime, we're going to drop a link in the chat because we want you to become profitable. We're going to share 10 ways to monetize your message. Oh, that's not what we're sharing. What are we sharing? Is it 10 ways? Kezia, what are we sharing? 10 ways. Awesome. Is this link correct? Yep. Yep. It's a $97 value. You guys are going to get it for free. 10 ways to monetize your message. And the link is in the chat. With that, I will turn it over to Kezia for Q&A. Thank you so much for that insightful, informative talk, Kimberly. Now let's head on to our question and answer portion. So we encourage the audience to ask questions by raising their hands on their screen, using their raise hand feature here on Zoom, or you can unmute yourself if you want. So go ahead, fire away. Hi, Kimberly. 
Hi. Um, yes. So this is. Uh, thank you so much for that speech. Um, and insightful information. I learned a lot about it. Um, so just just a question regarding the stages. Um, uh, what stage would be considered like a first? You know, when you enter the stage, um, is there one stage that you would rather go on to that is first that can that can um I, I just say provide a segue to the other stages like uh, for the first stage could that change um like it could be a youtube video uh, like for example or okay. does it have that's to a, be like yeah that's a great question so what leon is alluding to is the medium of stage right is it yeah. is linkedin live best is youtube best is facebook live best is a podcast best is a summit best and here's my answer to that if somebody hands you a mic, you say yes. If somebody hands you a mic, you say yes, put it in the chat box. If somebody hands me a mic, I'll say yes. So if somebody invites you to be on their podcast, that's a great place to start. <laughs> All right. If nobody invites you on a podcast, starting your own on a Facebook Live is a great way to practice. That's a rehearsal stage and it's a great way to start out. You can also drop your link to your gift. So it can be a rehearsal practice stage. By the way, your LinkedIn Live, the first time you go LinkedIn Live or Facebook Live, you're going to have one person watch you. It's not going to be a disaster. Even if it's a disaster, nobody has ever died on my stage and I'm not going to have you guys be the first, right? So totally awesome opportunity. Just go live and just start talking, all right? So if nobody will hand you a mic, you create a stage yourself. So it doesn't matter the medium. Although... I will share that I don't think you should start with a pre-recorded anything. I don't think you should start with a pre-recorded anything. If you are going to do it, I want you to do it live. Even if it's a live interview with a podcast host that gets released later, that's still an actual interview where you're talking live. As opposed to, I'm going to stare at my camera and record a talk and then release it later. That is super intimidating and super uncomfortable. And you'll screw up a lot because you're going to want to edit it and you're going to be like, oh, I didn't quite say that right. When you go live, what comes out comes out, right? There are things that I've said on this that Toastmasters would be like, she said so. So is my favorite word. It's my favorite word. So we're going to be doing this next, right? It's my favorite word. And Toastmasters would be like, she said so 15 times. Yes, I did. But I don't care. Live is live. We have an opportunity to connect with an audience. We're going to deeply connect with them. I'm going to share value. And that's going to be awesome, right? When you do pre-recording, you're evaluating yourself on all these things that the audience will not care about when you do live. So don't do pre-recorded anything as your first stage. Ideally, podcasts are the best way to start. They're a great rehearsal stage. You can usually drop a link to something. Many times you can sell your book. It's like the best place to start. If you guys haven't already signed up for Potapalooza, you should do that right now. <laughs> Sign up for Potapalooza, just go. It's 10 bucks just to go. If you want the podcast and get interviewed on the podcast, it's 250, but just go and meet the podcasters. And you'll be like, I want to get on their show and their show and their show, and then connect with them separately and get on their shows. And that's a great way to start. I know it feels intimidating, but it's not. Nobody's ever died doing anything, any podcast with me. And it's not going to start. You guys are amazing. Did that answer your question, Leon? Yes. Thank you so much. Patrick Diamond. Hello, sir. Share with hey, us. Hey. Okay. I have a, a question that is, it's really regarding, so let's say when you're, you're, you're kind of getting started a little bit and you're trying to figure out what your what your true demographic is or maybe speaking maybe you could speak a little bit to the difference between for instance the talks that you're giving and your business and uh getting uh, there like I know that I have uh, oftentimes I find I have the fear of being typecast and recently you know because when I started uh I started <laughs> I started out, of course, I'm in, you know, I'm in lead as as well, as you know, and I started out and I wanted to do stress relief and work-life balance and all the shit that, you know, people don't want, um, which was the big thing learning from Iman, sell people what they want, give them what they need. So, <clears throat> which works really well, <laughs> I started to do that. So then I started into 
how to double your business through, you know, uh, your communication strategies, blah, blah. Now, um, so as it's progressed, I'm getting to the point where uh, I feel like a good stage for me is uh, and getting in front of law enforcement and fire an EMS because I used to be uh, in law enforcement. And also I ended up, you know, homeless on Skid Row uh, and had to learn how to deal with my emotions and such. So <clears throat> how did you navigate that? Um, trying to of like, oh, am I going to be the, you know, who, whatever your different talks were, how did you manage those emotions? What is that? What did that look like for you? Maybe if you could share a little bit of that. And uh, did you ever have that feeling of worrying about being typecast or, uh, you know, just, it's just and picking that one thing and saying, this is what I'm going to do and not awesome. having a heart attack. Awesome. Great question, Patrick. Okay. So if I'm correct, you're asking, um, what am, am I worried about getting typed for just being one thing? And then um, what, how do I get in front of my appropriate audience? So those were two kind of questions. Did I get that right? Asking both those. Yeah, questions? kind of. I mean, for instance, your TED talk was from confirmation bias to a new possibility, right? And, and as somebody who more sees you on the back uh, in the back scenes, and uh, you know, uh, I would even wonder, like, what are you even out there teaching people now? What are the stages that you are? Or like Frank King does suicide for truckers. Um, <laughs> so how does that happen? How did you navigate through it? And yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, so here's tip number one, be yourself. Everyone else is taken and it's the easiest thing you can be. All right. So if you get, if I get typecast as me, they're going to be like, she has a lot of energy, <laughs> right? That's true. I do. When I get on stage, I'm going to have a lot of energy. And if that people don't want that, they're going to opt out naturally. Right. I had a guy email me one time after speakers playhouse live, which was a super like it's a speakers playhouse every is every week. Super fun, very energetic, lots going on. And we talk very fast on purpose. Okay. Afterwards, he emailed me and he's like, Miss Kimberly, you need to slow way down. We can't, we can't understand you. You're going way too fast for us. If you could slow down, that would be much better for me. And I was like, awesome. He's going to self-select himself out of my tribe. And that's okay because I am, I cannot change who I am to be accommodating to him. Well, I have to continue to be me. So I don't mind if people typecast me as me right? So there's, for me, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's the easiest thing you can be. If you try to be somebody else, you're going to fall down and you're selling something that you're not. So if I come out here and I'm a very, very low key speaker or something, and then I get them into my class and we're moving really fast, they're not going to like it. It's going to be disharmony. So show up as you, be you. You're the only one you can be. You don't have a choice and it's the easiest thing for you to be. And everyone else is taken. Okay. So I don't worry about being typecast. Um, my TEDx, because you cannot sell and because you cannot um, and because you cannot get paid, my TEDx is a passion project. It's an idea worth sharing. It is something that I'm very passionate about. Confirmation bias is a big deal and it got hit. We actually, we it wasn't intentional, but we actually released that when we were talking about fake news and politics and it was huge in America, right? Fake news is basically confirmation bias. I only am going to believe what I already believe, and I'm going to find more evidence to prove that that's true. It's a very big, passionate thing for me, right? And I tie it in in speaking later by saying, your audience has confirmation bias. The people who come see you already want you, have confidence that they already want you because they're trying to seek out more people that tell them the same thing they already want to know. Okay, so that's how I tie that in, but it's not necessary to on, a, on an authority stage. That is really just to get your name out there. How do I manage my emotions? If you ask my family, they will tell you that I came out of the womb sharing my opinion and I never stopped. All right, and I came out of the womb and I was like, I don't like this, it's cold out here and I'm gonna tell the world about it, right? And then after that, I just got on stages, right? I've been on stages all my life. So it's, it hasn't been a real fear for me. But if you're an introvert or you're nervous about it, first off, just remember, don't worry about public speaking. It's just a stage you're going through. <laughs> Everybody get that stupid joke for the day. All right. And secondly, 
tell yourself that all that feeling of being nervous is that you're actually excited. This I learned from my mom. It is brain waves the same as getting on stage and being nervous to get on stage is the same to your brain chemically as I'm excited to get on stage. So when, if you watch the replay of this, go back and watch the replay of it. The first thing I probably said is, oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. Cause I am like, that's super I'm excited. I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> I say it almost every time. It's just habit now because I am. And it's just a good way to tell your brain you're safe. You're just excited. You're not nervous. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. Okay. So we talked about podcast, audience, emotions, and TEDx. I think I nailed them all. If there's something else in there, I'd be glad to answer it. Let's go to Jason. And then Patrick, if you have another question, I'll be glad to take it. Hey, Kimberly, I'm sorry, y'all. I was, I, I didn't want to talk my screen. I don't want to bore y'all with my walk, but uh, I just want to thank you for everything that you shared today. Um, Kizia, thank you for your beautiful hosting. Um, and I do have a question though, after all that beautiful information. I was wondering, so I'm an actor and I've been on about 20 to 30 podcasts so far. And it's been really cool because I love sharing my story, right? But I was, as you were talking, I was like, huh, would people pay for this? So I was wondering, how do I go back and get that content and start to take the steps that you're talking about to begin to maybe monetize um, just the different podcasts and the stories and, and things of that nature? Yeah. So I see profit in a couple of different ways. You can profit by doing speak to sell. You can profit by getting people added to your list. You can profit by getting authority. You can profit just by getting experience and feedback. So those are the four stages, right? Um, but you can profit if you're talking about would people pay to see you give a talk? Absolutely. Um, if you are talk, if you are, if you are a speaker and you have a story to tell, um, then there are ways to get you into uh, keynoting. And we actually, I do, if you can connect with me directly, um, I teach a class, we're doing it this weekend called Keynoting Camp. It's in person. At the end of the, the Keynoting Camp, you actually have a bookable, billable $5,000 keynote talk. And if you want to do that and be a keynoter, I would love to connect with you separately from this. And we can talk about how to get you on those stages. Sounds golden. I'll be connecting. Thank you so much. Awesome. Any other questions? So there's uh, some questions here in the chat box. I'll just read them for you. That would be great. From uh, yeah, Atobra. I hope I'm saying that right. She said, can you go over the paid speaking gig? Payment before you speak. Thanks. Awesome. So when you do a paid speaking gig and it's a big deal, if you're a teacher, you're going to get a paycheck. If you're teaching a course, you're going to charge for it before you get on the stage. That's awesome. If you have a contract to be a keynote speaker and you're charging $5,000 to do it, then you have to put that date on your calendar. That's all really you can do for the day, right? You're going to go and be their keynote speaker. You're probably not going to have five other things scheduled that day. You're going to reserve that day just for them. Well, there's a price to pay for that. You have to reserve your whole day. You might have to travel to get there, travel to get back. So what you're going to do is you're going to give them a contract or they're going to give you one that talks about payment terms to reserve the day so that you don't book anything else that day. You can have clients, you can't have anything. You can't go anywhere else. You have to be there to keynote for them. So to reserve that day for them, they need to pay you 50% of your fee up front, And then you get paid 50%, the rest of your fee before you grab the mic, all right? That payment can be made via Venmo at the last minute. They can hand you a physical check. They can pay you via PayPal, um, whatever it is. I highly recommend getting paid before you grab the mic. And you can stand there and say, you know what? It's in my contract. I can't get on the mic until I get paid. These are the ways that you can pay me, all right? You can get on the mic. I'm not telling you that don't ever do it. If you get on the mic, you've just risked not being able to collect that second half. And then you have to go chase them. And really any event planner worth their salt will pay according to the contractual terms. Unless something major happened and you believe them, really they should have already paid you. It should already be taken care of before you grab the mic. Okay. And you can say, I have, here's my PowerPoint presentation or, you know, here I'd like, let's get me mic'd up. But before we do, I need to go ahead and, and get the, the remainder. Okay. Did that answer your question? Hopefully it did. Any other questions in the chat that I missed? I don't usually watch the chat. Here's a tip. Don't watch the chat. Have somebody like Kezia there for you, re-putting things in the chat so that you don't have to watch the chat and get distracted from what you're supposed to be teaching. Do save the chat afterwards though, because there will be questions on there that you missed 
that you want for feedback. So the next time you teach this, that you'll be able to answer those questions for people if it's appropriate for everyone. All right, that's a very good tip. Um, we don't have any questions in the chat uh, other than the question, what tools do you recommend to create videos by myself without a team to post on LinkedIn and website and to share with meeting planners? And I believe you answer that question through chat. Awesome, yeah. But if you'd like to I put a note that. in the chat. I actually have a lot of resources that I use that I love to use. Oh, I'm gonna have to share the screen here. I hope that's okay. This is the tool, this is the link that I put in there. Um, I'm using this right now and this right now. So my Brio Logitech 4, 4K webcam is great. If you're ever planning to go to TV or a higher level, you're gonna wanna record in 4K. I learned that from Iman as well. Um, this is a great little product. Um, it's really very, that's what it looks like on my thing right now. Um, it, it's really powerful and you can move it around if you need to, right? So it's not stationary with your laptop. You can actually pick it up and physically move it around, raise it, lower it. Like my, my laptop's way down there and I can type on it. I don't have to type like this, um, but the I actually have it stationed on a monitor, which is a little higher. So that's awesome. Um, I love having a speaker timer. I put this in my suitcase whenever I go and travel because there are times where I'm like, hey, I need timing. And if I'm up on stage, I don't, it's not as easy for me to say, hey, Kezia, can I get a time check, right? I want to be sure that I know when my time is up so that I can be on time. It's super important to be on time. My light kit here, you can see that actually if I raise my glasses a little bit, you can see the reflection of that light kit in my glasses because I have it stationed above the screen. Usually you don't see it. If I have this other light kit on, you can see those circles. Um, and I usually don't like that one as my light kit. That's a, a giant ring light over there. It reflects my glasses. It does offer a really good floodlight in, um, but it's really powerful. If you want a C920, this one's a little cheaper. Um, the lavalier microphones are really great. If you want a green screen chair, those are super fun. I don't like those because I stand whenever I talk. Um, but a lot of people wanted to know what people use and that's a really cool little thing that you can travel with. Um, the boom mic is, if you're going to be a podcaster, super cool to be able to get a, a boom mic because it actually acts as a prop as well. And you look more professional if you're going to do a video on yours. And then there's just some other resources that you guys can check. If you guys are nervous about speaking on stage, I highly recommend grabbing this. It's written by Jia Jang. It is not my book. He wrote a book called Rejection Proof. It's one of my favorite stories ever. It's about a gentleman who's Asian and is terrified of rejection. And he sets about doing a hundred days of getting rejected or maybe a hundred weeks. I think it's a hundred days of getting rejected so that he can become accustomed to getting rejected and not have a fear of it. anymore. It's called Rejection Proof by Gia J. Check it out. It, it's, it's so inspiring. If you think you're nervous, wait till you hear his story. It's absolutely incredible. Sounds perfect. I do Thank just you. have a one question, Kim. Okay. Um, yes, Leon. Yes. So, so when you go live, for example, is it is it more appropriate to do a Q and A than to do like a webinar, for example? Like if you have a topic, um, what would be a good thing to do, or just talk about your surroundings or or the day? Like, like is there a particular okay. topic? I mean, okay. So if you go live on Facebook, yes, and you're alone, you don't have somebody with you talking. You're not interviewing anybody. If you go live on Facebook, you need to have a topic that you want to cover and three points that you want to cover. All right. So you can say, uh, hey, folks, I'm Kimberly Crow. I'm super excited. Today, we're going to be talking about the three things that you have to have in your talk title in order to get booked by stage uh, stage host. The three things. Number one thing that you absolutely need to have is your target market. You gotta have your target market in your talk title. The second thing that you need to have is a number. If you have a number in your talk title, our brains are gonna wanna know how long or how much and having a number in your title is absolutely fabulous. And the third thing is be clear. Make sure that your talk title is not nebulous at all. We as speaker bookers absolutely want to know for sure what you're gonna teach our audience. So don't be clever or catchy or creative. Just be clear instead because that will get you booked. That is, have your target market, be clear, and have a number in your talk title, and that'll get you more times than not. Cheers. That's it. Great. Oh, Great. And can you and can you also, I guess you can drop your link um, to your website as part of the live, for every live. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to have a call to action. So I, that's a really good point, Leon. So we were doing that quickly. But if you um, if you're doing that live, you could be like, if you loved this tip or you want more tips like this, go ahead and join my Facebook group. Just click the link below. And I would love to have you as part of the community. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Great. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Great insights. Yes. Thank you for your question, Leon. So for those who are not called, we encourage you to personally ask the speaker your question. So uh, Kimberly, how can people reach out to you personally? Awesome. You can check out uh, support at speakersplayhouse.com if you want to email me, or you can just go to speakersplayhouse.com or potapalooza.com, and we would love to have you become part of the community. I also have Facebook groups out there. You can join those. Um, I got a lot of free stuff. You can play with me for a really long time for free before stepping into stuff if you want to. Um, I believe that you're just learning more about me, and we're building a relationship. Eventually, uh, if you decide that I'm your person, you want to keep working with me, I would love the privilege of working with you. Thank you so much, Kimberly. So now we're on the last part of our event, our takeaways and gratitude circle. So please uh, raise your hand if you want to share any takeaways you had on this event or if you want to give your appreciation to our speaker today. Yes, I would like to say something. Um, so awesome. really, really um, appreciate your time, Kimberly, for, for coming out and just telling us about um, the very important topic I think a lot of us overlook is speaking, speaking, because the power of speaking is huge, especially if you're building your audience and if you have your own business like I have. So I'm in consultation, so I, I speak a lot. So it's a powerful way to build your audience and to get noticed. And I was not familiar with the stages. Um, so when you mentioned the f with the four different stages, um, it really it really made me um, second guess and think more. So I really appreciate that insight. And also for Keisha for organizing this event. I think it's invaluable. And I learned a lot of valuable traits and and um, like knowledge, especially um, takeaways for speaking. So we yeah, appreciate your time and your insights, Kim. Thank, Thank you. you, that was helpful. You're welcome, for sure. I'd also just like to read some comments here in the chat box if you haven't read it. Ilona says, Kimberly is amazing. I love working with you. And yeah, Tobra says, this was amazing. Thank you, Kimberly, for these great nuggets. These are like golden nuggets, you know. Totally agree with that, yeah. All right. Thank you again, Kimberly, for sharing. And thank you, Keisha, for hosting and People have to hop on to another call, but uh, this has been awesome. Nice to see you again, Kimberly. My All pleasure. Right. Awesome. So anybody else who would still like to share your takeaways and gratitude? All right, going once, going twice. All right, Veronica, go ahead. Hi, Kimberly. Hey, Veronica. It's good to see you again, darling. <laughs> yes, good to see you. And as usual, I, I just love your pre presentation, the life that you put into it, and all the good nuggets that you have given us. And I sure will be using some of them. Awesome. Yes. Thanks, Veronica. We'd love to play with you. Okay. We surely, surely benefit, all of us. All right. So... Thank you so much, everyone, for showing up at today's event. There will be exciting weeks and months ahead for EIN. So stay tuned and be updated on some upcoming announcements on our meetup groups and our official website. So you, you can, um, if you want to save the chat, you just go to the chat box and then click on three dots there. And the more to save chat. If you want to keep all these uh, um, links and questions and answers that you'd like to save and read later. All right. So once again, thank you. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for sharing with us your knowledge, your expertise, and for just being here and sharing your valuable time with us. And uh, thank you, everyone, for showing up at today's event. So please just... Uh, 
watch out for our new announcements in Meetup Group and for our upcoming events. So once again, thank you so much, everyone, and we will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.